Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, on today's episode, we have Scott Hugh Mitchell. Scott is a fashion and advertising photographer based in Los Angeles. He got into photography at a really young age through his obsession for documenting street photography, or street art, actually, in uh, the Los Angeles landscapes. And the cool thing is he's really young. He's 20 years old. He's the youngest Hasselblad Photographer of the Month recipient. So without further ado, here is Scott Hugh Mitchell. Welcome to the show, Scott. Hey, how's it going, Mark? It's going great. Well, um, a lot of questions I have for you, but the first is uh, you're 20, and uh, you're shooting out there with the Hasselblad doing all this really amazing work, but how do you afford a Hasselblad at 20 years old? Is that your, your primary camera, uh, or do you shoot with other things? Well, I shoot with two cameras. Um, I shoot with the Hasselblad H3D2 and the Canon 5D Mark II. Um, and really, I mean, as far as being able to afford a camera, I mean, that really comes along the lines of really starting my business and investing in, in my company and my brand. Um, you know, most people think because you're starting a photography business, you know, you don't necessarily need to, you know, invest as much as you would a normally as a, as a normal business. But I really felt that I really needed to you know, get a loan and start a, you know, a full business as if I was almost starting a restaurant, have a marketing plan, have everything uh, laid out and ready to go. Well, you know, that's something that we discuss with a lot of photographers um, and, you know, the, the decision of going full on into a business, getting a loan and a business plan, it's really wise. So uh, how did you um, learn how to create a business plan and figure out how to get your loan and start your business? Because that's not something that a lot of beginning photographers think of doing so uh, how did you how did you do that I went to school actually uh, I went to Santa Monica College um, in Santa Monica California and uh, lucky enough to have an amazing photography program there including um, an advanced business photography course uh, that taught me everything from you know permits to bidding a job um, to setting up a business plan and figuring out how I was going to fund my photography career. Yeah, and so that seems to me to be um, a path that, that fewer and fewer photographers are taking. So it's great to talk to somebody that's young and uh, finding that actually going to school to learn about this stuff is, is beneficial. Um, well, let's, let's transition a little bit. In fact, let's talk about your transition from uh, you shooting street art in Los Angeles to now shooting fashion and advertising. How did you make that jump from uh, shooting all that art to shooting all these uh, commercial clients? Well, really, I mean, the way I started out was uh, just carrying a camera around with me like like most um, hobbyists and, and amateurs, I guess. Uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just carrying a digital camera around at the time taking pictures of anything that I, I thought interested me and um, started posting some of the pictures online and got some good uh, feedback on the photos and you know I really was looking to figure out what I wanted to do what I wanted to go to school for you know this was probably when I was you know 16 years old so actually even younger probably about 14 years old and right then and there I knew that photography was what I wanted to do. So, I mean, that, that's pretty amazing that you go from 14 years old through uh, years of work and now you're 20 and you're on the path. So uh, that's just, it's amazing to me that, you, that you're able to do that and stay so um, focused on, on what you want to do. So congratulations on that. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the photography that you do. Uh, you're not afraid of shadows and a lot of the things that you shoot, you've got some really hard light. Can you walk us through some of the, uh, the light modifiers and the, the type of light that you use to light uh, your, your images? Well, I am a big fan of hard light and um, really experimenting with strobe. I'd say 90, probably 98% of my entire portfolio is lit with strobe, um, whether it be you know, a, a $90 Vivitar flash or some Pro Photo 8As. Um, I mean, it really, it really varies. Um, but as far as the hard lighting goes, um, I'm a big fan of, you know, just using a, a really hard silver dish, really contrasty, uh, 
direct or using maybe a, a strip bank with uh, the diffusion pulled out or a beauty dish. Um, you know, I, I do sometimes use softer, softer modifiers like a double diffused softbox, but um, I'm a big fan of using a lot of lights and using them really hard to create a really uh, contrasty image. Well, let's talk about one of the images that you lit and we can get into some specifics about uh, how it was done. And it's uh, specifically this uh, image that you shot of Shepard Ferry, who is a well-known uh, street artist. And it's this Im interesting image. He's got one of his stencils. He's standing in front of one of his pieces of art. Really a nice hard side light. Can you walk us through you know, how you did this specifically with the lighting setup. So yeah, uh, for that shot I used the Dynalite, I uh, used two of my Dynalite heads and basically I had one head coming from behind with a closed down umbrella and that allowed me to just uh, highlight him very lightly from the back while still creating a very uh, contrasty dark image and then I side lighted him from the front with a, a beauty dish with uh, one diffuser panel inside of it so it was um, still shadowy but also kind of creates uh, that that mysterious look it's it's a it's a lighting setup I use a lot it's, it's fairly simple for on location you know two lights nothing nothing crazy. Well, let's talk about a, an image that's a little bit different than that. It's in studio. It looks like you s shot this on a, a psych or seamless background. Um, it's this uh, beautiful shot of this girl. She's looking over her shoulder. She's sort of hunched forward. Can you walk us through how you set up the, uh, this beauty shot? For this shot, um, I basically, I shot it on a cove. Um, so I set up a, a hot wall, which was um, four heads with two umbrellas and two V-flats um, backwards hitting hitting the cove to control the, the light fall off behind her on the cove and then it, I lit her in front with a um, sideways turned extra large um, softbox so this is definitely one of the softer images that I've done. Yeah awesome I, I really love it. it it is a little bit different than your other work but it's it's a beautiful image well, let's talk about another one that I thought really um, just sort of jumped out at me. This is a uh, shot of this girl, and she looks like uh, so there's three of her in the same image. So it looks like uh, maybe you did a long exposure with multiple flashes or you did some compositing. Can you walk us through how you did this uh, shot of the girl with uh, three of her in the same shot? That actually was done in camera. Um, that shot I shot uh, when I was in Paris. Uh, we were under a really, really dark bridge in Paris, and... Um, I wanted to get some of the ambient light coming from under the bridge and I wasn't really getting that, you know, at 12 o'clock at night um, using, using two strobes on her. So what I did was uh, I set my, my long exposure and I handheld the camera for about 8 seconds and I just held the pocket wizard in my hand and basically uh, did multiple pops while absorbing the ambient um, the ambient light and that's that's the image I got. Um, it's a lot grainier when you see it up close but I, I still really like it and I think it, it's something that's uh, different for my portfolio. So. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's one of my uh, favorite images that you've shot. It's, it's very interesting. Well, Scott, we're, we're about out of time, but before we go, I really want to ask if you have, um, you know, what are, what's next for you? You're 20, you've done some amazing work, you've had a lot of awards, uh, you've earned a lot of awards. So what's, what's next for you? What are your upcoming projects? Um, well, uh, I'm going to have a, an exhibition uh, coming up. The dates aren't set yet, but um, it'll be on my blog and, and my website. But I'm going to have an exhibition in downtown LA at the Ground Floor Gallery. Um, and I'm planning on moving to New York uh, in June um, to completely relocate um, my business out there. And um, that, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm always shooting, um, so you know, check my website. I update it with a, a new shoot or two every week. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Scott. I really had a good time uh, uh, talking to you, and it's very inspirational to see your work. So again, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks very much for having me, Mark. Well, you bet. Remember, if you want to see more of Scott Hugh Mitchell's work, just go to scotthughmitchell.com and you can see a lot of the stuff that we weren't able to show you today. And it's, it's really amazing work. 
Well, thanks for joining me today on How They Do That. Remember, if there's somebody that you'd like to see on How They Do That, you can send your suggestions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.